Hello and welcome to the Media Mastery Show. I'm Aldwin Altenay and I have a very special guest today all the way from America. In fact, he comes to us from Newberry in Florida. Newberry, I hope I said that right. Newberry in Florida. His name is Jacob Jones. He's a podcasting expert. We're going to be talking today about podcasting, how you can use podcasting in your business and in your life to get your message out to the masses. Hello, Jacob, and welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, Aldwin. Thanks so much for joining us today and you are also host of the Tech Webcast show which is uh, also got two other people from Australia that host that show with you. Can you just let us know a little bit about your podcasting background and how you got to be a host on the Tech Webcast show? Well, with the podcast, what he, what he did is he just invited me and then, and that, then after that I was made host after a while. So and that I got, was Brad? Brad that invited you? Yeah? Yes. And how did how did Brad find you? Actually I found him through Google Plus. Okay. And how did you what did you say to him that that got things started? Well he what he what he did he talked about his podcast and I was sharing it. He says, Would you like to come on one day? And I said, Yeah. Sure. Awesome. And you've done now so many episodes. You've had nearly a million viewers on Tech Webcast Show. Um, so what do you see as your role mainly with, with the actual podcast? Well, what I do in a way is, is I help Brad with the show notes and getting guests and stuff like that. So, But other than that, we do get some very good guests. Like yes. you. We, had, we had me on the show, so that was um, <laughs> so that was one of your better ones. <laughs> but yeah, you had you really you had some brilliant um, brilliant shows. And uh, so, what are, what is uh, is there any any particular shows that are really memorable or um, that really stand out? Have you interviewed any of your heroes? Uh, we got Ken Domic. He's a food reviewer. Okay. He's from Canada. Okay, okay. And he was really good? Oh, yeah. Okay, brilliant, brilliant. And who else can you think of that was great, other than myself, of course? No ego here. <laughs> we got, we had Swan on from uh, Swan Communications. Uh-huh. So, uh -huh, right. so the team got drones to review okay okay great and I know you have interviewed also uh, my friend Ian Marsh from Street, Street Smart Marketing uh, so you've uh, you've done some great interviews there hundreds of interviews so definitely check out Tech Webcast as a podcast um, so we, let's talk about look at the um, the format of podcasting now, what is podcasting for those that are completely new to this that are watching this right now what is podcasting Jacob so podcasting is it's like a little radio show that people can record or and do live. You could do it video or just audio. Most people do love to do it with just audio because sometimes they have bandwidth constraints and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they just do audio. Yeah, that's true. People do want good audio quality. And of course, right now we are, in a way, I guess this is a type of podcast. It is a show where I'm interviewing you, except we have the video format here. And of course, when you are video streaming, uh, yeah, sometimes words can cut out here and there. So uh, it can be, you know, more challenging with the audio. Uh, however, podcasting is really taking off, isn't it, uh, Jacob? It's been huge in America, I believe, for a long time. How long have you known about podcasting over in America? For a long time because I used to watch uh, a po listen to a podcast called Security Now. That was part of the Twit Network. Okay. Okay. And uh, would that have been, like, what, 10 years ago? Um how many years ago do you think that might have been? Steve Gibson. That's the guy that runs the show. And he's still running and does a pretty good job. 
Okay. And there are people also making very good money from podcasting. So for, for people who want to maybe get a show started, you know, what sort of tips can you recommend for how to actually get a show started as a podcast? What do people need to do very first thing? First thing they need to do is like get a web, a low website, get hosting for their, their podcast episodes like Podomatic or Libsyn. They're all other co-host gave up that one okay so get a website going get some hosting for that website and then what do they need to do after that they need to post it like to their to their iTunes and stuff like that okay yes post it to iTunes yeah yeah so that, that is a good idea to bring people back to a website rather than say just having your podcasts going on to well say YouTube for example because you don't have any control over YouTube or over Facebook a lot of people doing Facebook live now um, and because you don't have any control over that it is a good idea to link people back to your website right yes yes it is and then from there, once you build up a bit of a following with your podcast, and obviously you need a, a good topic too, right? So before we go to how you can monetize a podcast, uh, you know, what, what about people that maybe, you know, thinking, well, I'd love to do something, but I don't really know what to do. You know, how could they come up with some ideas for some sort of shows they could do? What they could do is go off of what their favorite thing to do is. Like, for me, a lot of times it's very much a lot of gaming and stuff like if they want to talk about news and other tech news yeah so you love tech news so that's why tech webcast is great for you um, and you're an online gamer as well so you love all the gaming right so you, you know and you, you've done another podcast too haven't you around that what was the other podcast you were doing other two two podcasts what were the other ones well I was doing tech luster Tech Luster, and, was it? Yes, and the Podcast Overlord. Podcast Overlord. Okay. Okay, great. And uh, how long did you do those shows for? Mm, not that long. I did tech, le tech Webcast longer. Okay. Okay. And why did you stop those shows? We weren't getting any hits. But, oh, so we, okay. We just stayed with Tech Webcast. We just su suppressed them. Okay, okay. So it wasn't enough traffic to, wasn't an, not enough people watching it. Um, so Tech Webcast has really taken off. I know you get lots of viewers with that. So that's, so sometimes you might have to try a few things and uh, have a go before you start building a following. And then the more you do, no doubt, the more it will grow. So back to Tech Webcast. So you guys are now, you, you sell advertising on there, I believe. You sell banner ads. How, what are some of the ways that you're monetizing the Tech Webcast show? So, what we're doing is we're selling ads on Tech Webcast and Brad's blog. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Brad says it's like five bucks a month. Okay. Okay. So, selling advertising, yep. And banner ads, yep. Yep. Okay, great. And can people also sort of donate and sponsor? You know, are you doing any crowdfunding or anything like that? Yes, we are. We're doing, we're doing it on Patreon. Just follow us at Patreon slash Webcast. Okay. Okay. All right. So just go to techwebcast. What's your website? Dot info. Dot info. Techwebcast.info. I was going to say dot com, but I knew it was something different. Okay, so techwebcast.info to find out more about Tech Webcast. Okay, and what about podcasting? Like as far as, um, you know, traditional media now, like Dolly Magazine just closed the other day. Uh, after 46 years of doing a print production, Dolly Magazine, which has been huge with young female readers over the years, since 1970 actually when they started, they have now, this December issue is going to be their very last print edition because they've got so many viewers now going online. So can we talk a little bit about the changing face of media? You know, we've gone from, from the traditional media, a lot of people, obviously there's still a lot of traditional media out there, but now we're moving over to more of the online media. So what sort of changes have you been noticing, Jacob, in the whole world of media and how things are changing in how we're communicating our messages? Yeah, for me... A lot of times I 
just read off my iPad instead of just purchasing or subscribing to the magazines and stuff out here. Like for mm -hmm. the first class, out here, I would get like PC Magazine or Game Pro. Okay, so you get specific magazines in your niche or what you like yes. around your interests. Yep. Okay. Then once, then once I found out they they put the whole entire magazine on the internet, I just went I went on there and just met. After they um expired them, they put them there. They could read them. Right. Yeah. So that's interesting. So people aren't paying so much for the subscription now to the hard copy magazine because eventually they'll end up online and they'll be free online. Is that what you're saying? Hmm. Yeah. So it's been becoming harder and harder to make money out of traditional media, as in newspapers, radio, TV, traditional TV, radio, newspapers, magazines. Uh, and now people more and more are going online. And, you know, I think this is really exciting times because, you know, we've got more freedom of speech now. You know, once upon a time when it was just a few people that were controlling all the media, you know, they could get across whatever messages they wanted to, whereas now people can have a voice. Now, how, how important do you think that is, Jacob, for people to be able to have a voice nowadays? Oh, it's very good because they, people need to speak out and say what they need to. Like if something needs to be changed or added, they, they should ask. Yes, okay. yes. Absolutely. Like if you feel passionate about something, you know, I always encourage people, you know, speak up about it. Even if you just put something on your social media, you know, you can help sign petitions against things that you're upset about out there or, you know, you see some kind of atrocity out in society. Um, like on the Gold Coast just recently at a Pat Mercedes event, we just raised $105,000 in one event for a, a group called She Rescue Homes. And what they do is in Cambodia, they rescue girls that have been sexually abused or raped uh, or have worked as sex workers from age six to 15. These young girls are taken out of their homes and used as sex slaves. And this She Rescue Home, they actually build, build a home and an environment where they rehabilitate the girls uh, and put them back into you know, the workforce in a um, you know, much more respectful way, I guess, uh, than, than that. So. You know, $105,000 raised, which is fantastic. So, uh, you know, I mean, not saying that, uh, you know, anyone just go out and raise that. However, if you just put a link to She Rescue Homes, if, that, if that's something that moves you, or for me, it's animal charities. You know, I've got animalactionday.com that, that I, I started Animal Action Day because I was sick of seeing animal cruelty. So whatever it is for you, uh, you know, make sure that you get your message out there. So what are some other great podcasts that you uh, watch or listen to, Jacob, that you love, uh, that you'd recommend us to also go check out? Well, my other mom, than tech webcast. Well, my mom, she listens to a show, a radio show that's daily at Bob and Sherry. They do a radio show. Bob and Sherry? Yeah, they're pretty good. I actually got to meet them in person. And what do, what do Bob and Sherry talk about? The everyday thing, but do you want okay. to know that one of them actually said, "They Bob thought my mom was my girlfriend." Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's the kind of stuff that would have been on the early Oprah shows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, classic! And can people see that online? Can they? Yes, at bobandsherry.com. Bobandsherry.com. Okay, check it out. That sounds really interesting. And uh, what about, have you got some other favourites you can share with us? Mm, really, I just, I, I just play back the tech webcast so I can listen to it again. Yeah, yeah. Okay, what about some tips for people, you know, they might be a bit shy on camera or whatever and, you know, they want to ask some questions as, as a host, right, as a tech webcast host, some tips for people on how they can be a great host. What are some tips for that? Well, I have a my friend that doesn't like coming on camera. But I tell, all I tell him, don't worry, but you're not going to get hurt or anything. It's just, yes. just a lot of times he's all skittish. Right, yeah, so that's important to make people feel comfortable as your guest so that um, they can share openly. That's a good point. And what about when it comes to asking questions, you know, what 
And like, do you prepare a list of questions before you start or do you kind of go with the flow? How do you do your show? Well, sometimes it, what happens is it just, sometimes it just hits us and we just ask the question right away. Okay. So you kind of go with the flow more with it. Yeah. Yeah. I like that style too. That's what we're doing here right now for, for everyone who's watching. Thanks for joining us. And, uh, you know, Anyone who's on this, we'd love to see your any questions or comments. We'd love to see that um, in the comment box. And, of course, after this video has uh, finished, it will be live on YouTube. So it will be on YouTube. So you can uh, comment underneath the video and share it if you like as well with your friends. Okay, so getting a website started for someone who's new to podcasting, would you recommend they do it themselves or get an expert to do that? Well, they would probably need an expert to do that because... A lot of times, like if you're trying to set up the images and stuff, you have a hard time doing it. Right. Yeah. So make sure you get an expert. So what sort of expert would someone look for? Uh, what sort of credentials? Like if they're looking for a website company, um, what are some things they should check out before they employ a website person? Check out, like, like if they have other websites that they made and stuff like that, I had my tech cluster redone, but I, I redid it myself. Right. Well, but you're quite technical, right? Whereas a lot of people wouldn't be that technical. But yeah, check out some other websites that, uh, that they've done. That's definitely a good point. And see if you like the style. And what about like WordPress websites as opposed to, you know, like they, I think they call it um, open source as opposed to. Um, yeah, open source platforms like WordPress. Would you recommend people do a WordPress website or to do it in the in the old style? WordPress because it, you have safer plugins and stuff like that, so you don't have to worry about most. Stuff. They scan their plugins twenty four seven. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah, okay. Okay. That's good to know because I have heard that some people have been hacked through WordPress if they don't update their plugins. So that's really important, yeah, to update plugins in the back end. Every great once in a while, change your password. And every so often, change password. Do you use something like LastPass to uh, make sure that your passwords are a strong password, or do you do you just have a standard password you use? LastPass. Every password. LastPass. LastPass, yeah. Well, LastPass in America and LastPass in Australia. <laughs> anyway, L A S T P A W S. How you say it? So, yes, that is a great website and definitely good to use for a strong password. How how much uh, online you know scammers and things are you seeing nowadays and people hacking into websites? Are you seeing a lot of that over in America? Yes, but a lot of the times it's very it gets fixed very easily. Okay, well, that's good to know. Okay, because, uh, yeah, I mean, I've heard of people having their whole databases shut down and they've had to pay money to retrieve it and all that sort of thing here in Australia. I know, ransom stuff. Yeah, ransom stuff, yeah, yeah. So what are some other things people can do to protect their websites other than a very strong password is good and change the password? How often do you change your password, Jacob? Oh, Mac, I, I, I do it through LastPass. I said it. Okay, and do you set it to keep changing it? Sometimes. Okay. But I, one of my um, my websites, the About Me page, I made a stupid strong one, 83 characters. 83 character password. <laughs> no one could get into it. <laughs> no one's going to change anything about you. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> so that's not a last pass one. You did that was a tailor made one. That actually that was made with LastPass's generator. Oh, okay. Okay. So you can actually say on LastPass how many characters you want it to be, is that right? Yes. You can have it up to a thousand. Up to a thousand characters. Oh yes. my goodness. That's insane. But of course, you don't have to remember it because LastPass automatically puts it in there, right? Yep. So you can have a thousand. Wow, that would be pretty hard to hack. Far out. And where are all these hackers coming from? Which countries are they coming from? Mostly what I've been reading is like Russia and stuff like Russia, China, Japan, stuff like that. Okay. 
Okay. Wow. Yeah, right. That's pretty scary. So what are some other tips to keep your information safe online? Well, there's a lot of people go, going around. I, I recently read they're doing like a free Amazon scam. So, no, so they're wanting to like, you need to sign in to your pot, your, your account to verify this order. Knowing for a well, while you don't have an order. Oh, wow. So you've got to watch that one. That's, that's a big scam, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you've got to, yeah, that's, that's a good one to warn people of. Yeah. And sometimes, like I got an email the other day, it said don't open this video, a particular video, because it'll just put a virus onto your computer. So, you know, what, what do you say about that? Like being careful about what you open, yeah? Yeah. And also, if you, you're into it, you have to get like a mail scanner or something like that. But I, what I suggest is getting like a cafe. They have the full suit. They have the firewall, the antivirus, and spyware and mail protection. I got mine for free through my uh, ISP. Okay. Okay. Yes, I have the right protections there. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good points. Uh, any other trends you're seeing in the online space at the moment? What about um, you know on, online? Well, on, on, online gaming is pretty huge, isn't it? So that's a pretty that's a pretty huge industry. Yes, because one of my friends, Brian, he plays a lot of War of Warcraft, and sometimes I actually got I had the starter pack. I actually got in there to play with them. But the thing is, when you have the starter pack, you only can go up to like I think level twenty. But if you buy it, the game and all the expansion pack, you can go oh over a hundred. Okay. Okay, wow. And what other online trends are you seeing other than the, the um, huge amount of online gaming that's out there? For me, what else is for me, it's like reading the news and stuff. Yeah, reading the news online. Finding out yeah. about um, malware protect, good malware protection. I have on my computer dual. So in other words, I have I have something called malware bite. Uh huh. Malware it's, bite. It's it's free, but they have a premium version that allows the auto scanning, like what the antivirus does. It stays on. But uh huh. The program off it shuts it shuts the the data off. So, so it's not auto scanning. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Now we've got a few viewers on this uh, live uh, show, which is fantastic. And I've opened up the group chat there. So if you've got any questions, uh, you're watching this right now, please feel free to pop them in the uh, message box there. And uh, we'd love to answer those for you. So with the uh, let's talk about tech webcast back to your podcast show which you do with let's explain who the other people are that you do it with so who are your fellow hosts Jacob? well what we got is we got daryl hunt uh-huh me and um brad okay brad and daryl and yourself okay and i wonder how brad and daryl also got together do you know the history there well daryl he's been a long time podcast listener of tech webcast okay. and, and from for a while he's been a very very high supporter for brad okay so he's been supporting okay. a lot oh, okay okay that's great that's great and you do the shows every saturday is that correct at at noon australian eastern standard time yes and yeah yes and if it for us, in state side, an Eastern keyboard, it's 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Eastern time. And would that be on a Friday, would it? 8 p.m. Friday? Yes. Okay, Eastern time. Okay, yep, that's good to know for people in America. And, of course, this is the other beauty of podcasting is people from anywhere in the world can hop on. It's, I think it's fantastic how we can get our messages out to the world the way we can now, Jacob. I think it's really exciting times moving forward. Now, 
What about technology as far as, I mean, you're obviously a technology whiz, okay. Um, what, what way are we going with technology, do you think, um, like, you know, with Google Glasses and all that sort of thing and our robotics and, um, you know, what, what, are, what are some future trends we're going to start seeing more and more now, do you think, with technology? Well, for me, I like to see some virtual reality come my way because, if they had like a at this one of the centers out here had that, I'll probably go go crazy and play some Minecraft virtually. With the Microsoft but got the name of the Microsoft head. They have a good one. Okay. And what are some other trends you you think we're gonna be seeing um, with technology? Well, this is just straight out there in fantasy. You know, phone implant. Phone implants. Okay. Right. How's, how would that work? It would be right behind the ear, built into their ear. And so, really? Yeah. That would be a good... I don't know if many people would use that, but that might be a cool idea. Wow. This, this implantable technology is kind of, um, it's a little bit scary, I think. I mean, like, you know, the, we've got chips and everything now in our cards. We're being monitored everywhere. Um, you know, they, they've started microchipping animals, you know, for a while now to get us used to the whole idea of getting microchipped. But apparently with some of these chips, they can actually change people's emotions with these chips. Have you heard that, Jacob? Yeah, but I don't think that's really true how it does that. Okay. I mean, it'd be hard to imagine how it would work, but, you know, technology, I guess, is at the point where it is pretty, you know, they can do some amazing things and you won't know it. Uh, what about robotics? Ro robots are sort of taking over a lot of jobs nowadays. You know, how, what have you started to notice there? Yeah, my robots, I have a robot on my floor. <laughs> a robot vacuum cleaner? <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just say something there, Jacob, and we'll be able to see your screen. Yeah, there's my robot. Oh, I there mean, it is. I, I gave her a name, Rosie. Rosie, Rosie. <laughs> the vacuum cleaner. Uh, that's awesome. And I mean, now, you know, at supermarkets nowadays, there's a lot more self serve. People are just going straight to the automatic teller to, to check out. You know, there's. there's you know, less and less need for staff nowadays, which is also changing the way people are doing business. You know, a lot more people are now starting their own businesses because they haven't got the job security of a traditional business anymore, of working in a traditional business, often with many businesses. So I guess the beauty also of podcasting is that people can actually make money from this, right? They can actually build it to the point. Like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, he did, he did Wine Library TV and he's made an absolute killing. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, many others, many others out there have done really well with podcasting. So, you know, the, the essential thing, obviously, is to have a, a good following, you know, having a good number of people coming to your show. Um, what are some other winning formula things there, Jacob, you'd say, to have a winning podcast? What are some other things you can do to really help grow the following? Well, for one, what I've been seeing is a lot of people stopping their podcasts and not keep going. It, yeah, if you stop your podcast and you like, go do something else, it, it kind of hurts your your, um, your business, stuff like that. Yeah, so be consistent. Be consistent. Keep going with your podcast. Yeah, because I hate to mention one one name, David DeFranco, he had a podcast. He just, I don't know if he stopped it completely, but he just, he just hit the brakes suddenly and his podcast was wrong. Okay. So, so what, is, what are some other things to get to build a following to your podcast? Well, get Keep good following. You would have to keep up with the, in the podcast about 
keeping all your, your pieces and stuff together. Mm -hmm. like, like you have to uh, keep a strategy going. Keep it going. Yeah. And, and I have something to say about podcasting. A lot of times, like if you have a lot of people on your podcast, please be careful. Don't jump over them because sometimes it makes them a little upset. Sometimes, sorry, I didn't hear that properly there, Jacob. So you can have a lot of people on your podcast, you're saying? Yeah, but then you could have like, you know, how you have so many people talking. Like, for instance, like I wanted to talk, but they kept cutting in. Oh, they kept cutting in. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so how do you stop them from cutting in? We can't. Brad, right. We have to let Brad know that then he what he does is he intervenes himself and says, if you got any questions, whoever, whoever wants to ask. Yeah, yeah. Now, it's interesting as we're doing this podcast, um, I'm looking at the screen, looking at your face, and I'm looking at the webcam. Now, your face is going left to right. Obviously, you've got some screens in front of you. Is that correct? So you're watching you're watching the podcast from your two screens. Is that right? No. I, have, I can't do that right now because my video card in this computer is messed up. So I'm using the onboard, so I can't, can't hook up an HDMI to my TV. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. And okay, great. So, all right. So, yes, you can make lots of good money from podcasting. You need a good idea, right? Get your website going, build a following. Now, what about social media? How important is social media to help build that following? You gotta have like a, a page for your podcast or show because that will get you more followers. More, more followers you have, and you want to more giveaways and stuff like that. Get more people and the idea, the more in the mood to listen. To so, how do you build a social media following? How how do you build yours, Jacob? Well, for us, we just share, share it out all the podcasts. Brad, what he does is he uploads it to Podomatic, SoundCloud. And he puts the players on bradsblog.org and techwebcast.info. So then, after that, he puts on a lot of other mediums. Yeah, so keep, yeah, yeah. So it's really like, it's like the, the World Wide Web I often think of as like a spider web, you know, and it's like as many little uh, points you can send out with links back to you, the better. Yes. Yeah, so, so get out on your blogs. That's a great idea. All your social media. Um, which social media would you say people will need to use? There is a lot out there. So just to simplify, what is the main social media people should be on? Well, I mean Twitter. Twitter and Facebook. Yep, Twitter and Facebook are the two main ones. Yep. And what about for people who say, oh, I don't want my private information on Facebook. What if Facebook take all my data and I've got, you know, no privacy? Um, what do you say to those people? Well, on Facebook, they actually now say your data is safe because what you do is you put it behind a lock. Or you could put, put something in there that it will um, keep it from being seen. You can make it only On any. Now your voice just cut out there, Jacob. Could you just repeat that last thing you said, please? What I was saying was, they have like a lock that you can tell it tell the Facebook site to like only advise to show what info to to the main user, which is me. Like if you have your phone number and stuff on there, and you don't want people seeing that or your address. Mm, mm, yeah, so you can change your, your, your security settings, your privacy settings, so not everybody can see your information. That's a good idea. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And how important now, I think there's 1.6 billion people now on Facebook. So if it was a country, it would be like the third largest country in the world. How important is it to be on Facebook and Twitter and to, to have a presence out there now? Well, it's pretty good because everybody I talk to is um, getting better and better and better. I'm getting well noticed now. It, yeah. It, yeah, and you hear about that exponential curve when it comes to online marketing or when it comes to any business. Sometimes you kind of you, you kind of chug along, chug along, chug along, and then suddenly things will just really go crazy. Right? And so you need to stay in there and build that momentum so it gets to the point where things really take off. Yeah. So some of the qualities you need as a person to be able to do a to a podcast. I guess you know we've talked about like you need stamina, right? You need you need to you know be consistent with doing the shows. What are some other personality traits that people need to do a good podcast? Charisma. What was that one? Charisma. Charisma. That's a good one. Yeah, charisma. Yes, yeah. charisma is a great one. With that one, I learned, like, if you talk, look at yourself in the mirror and talk to yourself, sometimes it helps you gain and gauge what you're saying, what you need to say. Yeah, so to build confidence, yeah, if you just, just uh, yeah, keep speaking into the mic there, uh, please, Jacob, because when, when you turn away, your voice trails out. Oh, sorry. Yeah. No, that's all right. That's, that's why I'm kind of missing some words here and there. Um, but, yeah, no, that's, that's good. So, uh, so, yeah, charisma is really important. So say, say a little bit more about that, about charisma. So I was playing like a Sims game a long time ago. They have like where you can get your skills and it helps out like the job. So like more and more skill points, the better you do, the better focus. Yes, yes. And everything is hard until it becomes easy is a great quote that I heard a while ago. So, you know, technology is pretty much new to all of us because computers have only been around about 20 years or so. Um, so we, we're all new to it. So it's just a matter sometimes of just battling through it a little bit until you, you know, feel confident, com you know, confident and comfortable. And the more you do it, the more confident you will get with the shows. Yeah. Do you, do you remember your first show, Jacob? Were you really nervous on your first show? Oh man, I destroyed the show badly. <laughs> I didn't do or anything. Right. Right. But you kept going, right? You you know, you've had that stamina, you had the charisma. And Brad taught me how to um, center myself better. Right, right. And what are some tips that Brad gave you on how to center yourself? Well, make full questions and stuff like that. And sometimes what he says, like if you can't think of a question, what I do is I use my Google Drive and I make a notepad and I put my notes on there. Uh huh. So you've got your notes to the side while you're doing the interview. That's a good idea. So you can think of some points. So if you run out of topics, you can think of some points to talk about. Research. Yes, do your research. Yeah, that's a good one. And also, I think another great skill is listening when you're interviewing people, is listening. Right. Because that can be you, very challenging. Yeah, if you don't listen, how, how is anything going to pass or go? Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because often we have a lot of communication, a lot of monkey chatter in our brain and it, and it can be hard to focus sometimes. And I think the other thing is really focus on the other person, you know, really focus on what you can contribute rather than thinking about how are you coming across and how do you look and all that sort of thing. So what about any other tips for people on how, you know, traits they need to actually do a podcast or what are some personality traits? Any others you can think of? Well, mostly charisma because you got to have the thought process going behind it. A lot yes. Of yes, so mainly charisma, yeah, that's true. And, I mean, it helps if you've got a sense of humour, I think, as well, and you have fun with the show. I think it's really important to enjoy it because other people will see that you're enjoying it. So I'm putting a few of my tips in here too, Jacob. So, um, But we are talking to you today about podcasting and we are talking also about online gaming. So you are a huge online gaming fan. What is happening in the world of online gaming? What's hot right now? For me, 
That's actually, I'm offline. Sometimes I play my, I have uh, all my old Nintendo games put on my computer. So uh -huh. I can play a game. Okay. Okay. And that's big. Sorry, Sorry I missed that. What I, was going, what I was saying was, I even got the retro Nintendo look-alike remote so I could plug in my computer and play it. Play yes. It yeah, and you love it. You love it, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, awesome. And, you know, people can make a lot of money now in creating games, yeah? Yes. My, actually, my dad, we had the Commodore 64 a long time ago. He made... He actually made some games for it. It's very easy. It's not hard to do to make games? No, on the Commodore 64, that's like 1985. Okay. Okay. Oh, very good. Very good. Okay. Okay, so any other trends, um, any other trends around podcasting or online gaming that you'd like to share with us? Well, with podcasting, I, for one, say stay with it. Don't drop out. Yeah. There's no lose in quitting. Yeah, yeah. So do you think with your shows that you started, you started two shows there that you, that you pulled out of, do you think you might start them again someday? Mm, I think I want to stay with Tech Webcast because you can't lose if you don't quit. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Just staying there, and and you are you are a great addition to the to the host. I, I think the three of you are fantastic. You work really well together as Tech Webcast hosts, and you do a great job. So I think that chemistry, if you've got multiple presenters or hosts of a show, to have that great chemistry between the, the co-hosts, that's really important, yeah? Yeah, the, the most we ever had on one show is like 10. 10 people on one show? Yeah. But a lot of times uh, you can't hear, understand them because sometimes it, when all or like five of them start to talk, it sounds like babbling uh. idiot. That. So these are ten hosts, ten people speaking on the show, not not viewers. This is actual. This is like panel, a panel of ten. Yeah, we actually, because when we did like the four hundredth episode, one of our, actually the three hundredth episode, we had like ten people on. We had like former guests and stuff like that come on. So it would be fun. So we just had a little fun with that. Awesome. Awesome, that sounds great. And of course, you've had you know nearly a million viewers now, um, I, I believe, to your replays, and that's the beauty of it. Once you record it once, you know you can watch it again and again. So it's the beauty of actually, you know, getting your message out there on, on video or audio, and uh, being able to share the love, share what you're passionate about. Podcasting, a lot of people now are coming out with podcasts. So what if uh, people are worried about, you know, they don't have an original idea or something? What would you say to those people? Well, they could tweak it to their own means so they can um, use what they – make what they want. But but you cannot – don't want to copy a complete podcast because that will screw, screw over the person, that person's podcast like plagiarism. With writing, but you have mm. to and the thing is, I think people will come to a show because they like your personality. So they'll come to it, but you obviously don't use the same name as another podcast. Ideally, you know, if you have a similar theme, think of something a bit original. Right. And I think with videos, if you change them about ten percent, if you change someone else's video about ten percent, you can call it your own. Have you heard that? I didn't know that one. Yeah, well, you can say, yeah, because you've done some original content to somebody else's video. So um, so on YouTube, for example, they want original content. So you can grab someone else's video, put an intro and an outro, or change a few things. And, yeah, that's what I've heard anyway. It may not be correct exactly, but I heard that at a seminar once. So, um, so yeah, who knows? You know, I mean, as they say, there's no original ideas out there. You know, everything you think of most likely would have been created before at some point. Yeah, yeah. 
Okay, that's great. So anything else around uh, podcasting? We'll be wrapping up the show shortly. Um, any other tips and tricks you'd like to share with us, Jacob, before we wrap up? Like I said before, stay with it. Stay with don't, it. Don't lose. Yeah, you won't lose if you stay with it. And what if, like, you're feeling really, like, tired and you've got no energy and you're kind of like, oh, it just seems like such hard work. How, how do you suggest that people pull themselves out of that state? Well, what they, what they usually do, like Brad usually does, like, if he has no guests, what he says is he, and if he doesn't feel like doing the podcast, he'll, he'll let us know if he wants to take a break. Or, or he, right. Daryl and I will take over. Okay, well, that's the beauty. If you've got multiple hosts, you can do that, I guess. But what if it's just one person on their own? That I would, for me, I don't know because I tried that. I stunk. Right, okay, okay. So you work really well as a team. So you really like the whole co-host thing over doing your own show. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, it is a great dynamic, you know, to have people to, uh, you know, work together with and have, you know, have that accountability. I think people do work really well in teams like that. Yes. Yeah, as long as, long as you've got the right chemistry with the people, I guess, you know. Um, uh, like, I love working in teams too, and, you know, and I love working on my own as well. So, I, you know, I, I do a bit of both. Um, but, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, that's, that's important to know what you're good at, what you like to do, and to focus on that. Right, right. Yeah. And to inspire people to actually go out and do a show. So once, as he's saying, stick with it once you do the show. But what about some, some ideas on, you know, inspiring people to, to actually get a show started? Like just what would you say to people thinking of doing a show and they haven't started one yet, what do you say to inspire them? Well, if they need, like, need a little help, like ask their friends to give, give them some inspiration and stuff like that. It should. Like if you ever feel like doubts and stuff like that, ask a friend to help you out. Come in there and um, like, like you're doing a podcast, but you feel like you're not going to make it enough, ask a friend to come in there and uh, they will try to help you and make you better. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Absolutely. Ask a friend, get some help from those around you if you're wondering or run some ideas by them even. Um, and let's just talk quickly about the, just the podcasting platforms uh, as well. So we're doing right now we're doing a, a YouTube Live using the Google Hangouts on Air platform, which has now gone to YouTube Live. Um, now, what, what technology do you use to do the tech webcast uh, interviews? We use Skype a lot. Okay. You, Yep, yeah, use Skype, so Skype's a great way to do it. And then once you do it on Skype, how do you record it and then put that online? Well, Brad and I and Carol, we all use Audacity. Audacity, okay. Okay, so Audacity is a great platform. Okay, so then you record it and yep. you put it up online. Okay, and is Audacity a free pro program? It is, I think. And it's available on Mac, Windows, and I think Linux. Fantastic. Okay, that's great. And when you when you take it from Audacity, put it online, do you need to reduce the size and all that sort of thing? Or does it do it automatically? What you do is on, when you put it up on the site, it will automatically put 192 kilobits because of the because some sites they require higher, some require lower. So they have wire chain. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, yes, good point. All right, that's fantastic. The Skype and Audacity. Any other platforms you'd recommend for doing podcasts on? Well, I would just say Skype because a lot of times it works, but sometimes it doesn't. Right now, mm -hmm. the bug for the Windows version, that crushes the, the mixer so you can't push the sound through. Mm. Got it. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. So I guess, you know, try the different platforms, see what you like best, you know, probably be up to your, your personal preferences as well. Uh, personally, I, I really like uh, the YouTube live and, and Google Hangouts. I, I like this format. 
And, you know, I'm learning things all the time too. So I think that's the thing too is don't get hung up on perfection. Don't let perfection get in the way of progress, as they say, you know, and uh, just keep rolling out with it. Um, any other final comments, Jacob, before we wrap up? Keep up with what you're doing. Never, never lose out. Yeah, never lose out. Yeah, and don't sell out on yourself, right? Right. And don't let the, when you aren't like YouTube or something, don't let the, um, the bad comments get you. What you do is just report them. Let the, the authorities at Twitter, wherever they are, just let them, let them go. So, yes, that's a good point. Don't take things to heart if you've got some bad comments because there are spammers out there that put some awful comments out there. So you can always report them to the uh, particular social media that you're dealing with. Um, and, yeah, what are some other tips there to, to not let those bad comments get to you? And, well, like, I'm on... I I watch the videos from Roman Art, Artwood. Sometimes people are making fake pages with his name on it making them click it and uh, it's like click bombing them for nothing. They're making, I miss, you, you cut out a bit there, sorry. So repeat that again, please. Because they're a click bomb, because they're making fake profiles and they're making, making it look like the, it's the real thing. But if you hover over it, there's no information. If you hover if you hover over it, so you're saying click bombing, they click bomb people, and if you hover over it. Yeah, you could tell if it's the real thing because if you're actually on the real page, you'll know because it has so much more info and more followers. Ah, oh, yes, yeah, so go to their profile and see, yeah, if they've got a lot of info or photos and things on their profile. Right. Yes. Yeah, so the fake profiles, often there's just one or two pictures and... Um, yeah, that's a lot of the Nigerian scammers are, are doing that, you know, they're, they're putting and they're putting other people's photos on there, um, one or two photos and the tiny little blurbs and there's hardly any posts. So really look at those posts too, but something like Facebook, for example, if there's not many posts, that's a bit suspect yeah. on, their, on their profile pages. Yes. Yeah, because a couple of my friends actually got Steve, he, someone made a fake profile of him. And he report, reported it, and Facebook took it down in five minutes. Oh, wow. That's great. That's great. That's good to know. That's, and, I mean, Facebook can be hard to contact. There's no real phone number for Facebook. But, you know, I guess through the support chat, is that where you go to, the support line? No, actually, you just hit the a little X button, and it'll ask if you want to report this post. Okay, he just did it that way. Yeah, just reported the post, yep. Yeah. Yeah, which Facebook allows you to, of course, with the post with the little down arrow. <clears throat> yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah that's good. Sir. Profile is a fake profile of me. That's what it says. Ah, oh, okay. Okay, interesting. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's a good point. So, yeah, you know, and try to encourage positive feedback. Um, like I always say to people, you know, if you like what you see, uh, share it. You know, please add your comments. You know, build that engagement with your show. And uh, I think that's fantastic too to, to get people involved. Like if you've been watching this right now today, for example, uh, and you're enjoying what you see, we do media mastery shows quite often. I also do Truth Expose TV and Animal Action TV, some of my other shows that I do online. So you can check that out. The YouTube channel is all in all times. And uh, I invite you to join me there and on all the main social media as well, which is Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Google+, Pinterest, Instagram. I'm on all of those. Uh, so love to connect. And, of course, Jacob, people can connect with you. Where can they find you? Well, on Twitter, jazzbot32669, one Z. Okay, on Twitter. as Just repeat that again for us, jazzbot. J-A-Z-B-O-T, 32669, one Z. 32669, one Z. Okay, great. So that's how people can connect with you. And, of course, dot info as well to check out your show which is on every week fantastic show and you really cover some great information you guys do a great job and have a good laugh as well any final comments before we wrap up jacob not really we just want to say the, the show was great 
I've never had an interview like this before. Awesome. And what did you enjoy about this show, uh, Jacob? It just, it's getting me out. It's helping me get out there with finding other people and all that stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So that's great. You scratch my back, I scratch your back, and um, we all help each other. I, I'm into win-win situations. And, uh, yeah, you've been fantastic, Jacob. Thank you so much. I know it's late where you are. What time is it right now in Florida? 9 9 p.m. Okay, 9 p.m. there. And right now in Australia, in Queensland, it is midday. So uh, you're wrapping up your day over there in Florida and we're just in the middle of our day here in Australia. And wherever you are in the world, thank you so much for joining us. I'm Alderman Altenay. We've been chatting today to Jacob Jones, one of the co-hosts of the Tech Webcast show from America. Thank you so much, Jacob. Really appreciate having you on the show today. Oh, no problem. Always fun. I would like to come back sometime. Yeah, absolutely. We can do an update. Yeah. That'd be great. That'd be great. And maybe interview some of your other co-hosts as well. Uh, maybe we could do that on some of the future shows. Yes, we grill them with just a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> we'll grill them a bit. <laughs> uh, absolutely, on special request from you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching us, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're having a fantastic time. It really is about being the best version of you that you can be and sharing your message to the masses as we do here on the Media Master Show and help you do that. Thanks once again. And um, please like and share. We'd love to see your comments. And we'll see you again very soon here on Medium. Thanks once again and goodbye for now.